this is Kim with Mom's Creative Moments, and I am bringing you a, a video today um, that is based on a blog post from Creative Memories using Painted Garden, which is a recently released collection. This is a blog post of a design by one of our CM um, contributors, Chrislyn Matei. I think that's how you say her name. Um, and it is one that she herself has done a video for. So um, if you know how to access that video, by all means, I would hop over there and watch hers. I'm sure it's excellent since she's the designer that came up with this. But since I just taught this for a National Scrapbook Day event over the, this past weekend, or by the time you see this, it'll be a couple weekends back, um, I was asked if I would go ahead and do a video on assembling this and put it on my channel so it's easy to find because I honestly I could not find Chrislin's so I have not seen it and I don't know if I do this um, design the way she would do it I try to follow her instructions but I kind of have to give give instructions the way I know how to so I may do it slightly different than she does, I'm not sure. Um, but at any rate, let's check out my workspace and get started. All right, so this is um, the Wave Hello to the Season spring scrapbook layout that Chrislyn um, created. And um, it's so lovely and beautiful. Many, many people have tried it. and. Um, and are in love with it and it is really really springy and pretty especially with the new painted garden collection however it is a little bit tedious and kind of tricky depending on um, on how familiar you are with this tool right here this is the, the creative memories decorative trimmer and it has two different um, two different waves that can be cut um, using a slide bl sliding blade as you can see right here and uh, the the grid that's on here and the measurement markings that are along the edge can be a little confusing so um, I'm gonna run you run through this with you really quickly so that you can uh, learn how to put this together but if you want this printed these printed instructions I recommend that you go to the Create Memories blog and look for this. Again, it's called the Wave Hello to the Season with the Spring Scrapbook Layout. And um, this came out in March of this year. So that's where you'll find these instructions is on the CM blog. And you can print them for yourself. All right, so let me just jump in here. First of all, you're going to need a, a collection. You can use any collection, but it is designed to be used with Painted Garden. And this is my version of that, um, that page that you just saw. You're going to need to choose a base paper, and you're going to need to choose four or five different um, papers that you want to use for inside your white weave right here and um, those are going to be the same papers that you use for these mats that are put over here on this side. And then this main piece right here um, is, I, I also chose to use that in my, um, in my weave. So if you um, just go ahead and choose your favorite papers and then choose this main one that's gonna go off to the side here, you're gonna need a two by 12 inch strip for that area and then the remaining pieces are going to be cut on the decorative trimmer. So um, let me jump right in, okay? What you see over here are some samples so you can kind of get an idea of what sh type of shape you're looking for. You're going to need six of these and they need to be the, all the same size. So um, on, on Chris Lynn's, instructions she says that these need to be one eighth of an inch wide and I'm here to tell you that these are more closer to a quarter of an inch wide you can see that right there on my on my measure board 
my mat. Um, but as, as long as they are all the same width, I think you'll be just fine. And it is really, really tough to get a 1 8 inch wide um, swirl like this. So if you're capable to do it, more power to you. Otherwise, please don't sweat it too much. You can see it doesn't make that big of a difference, but it does make your border on the side just a little bit wider. So that pushes your photos a little closer together over here. Um, so just, so just as long as you know that, but it really won't affect how you put these, um, the swirls within the weave together. Okay, so um, let me just go ahead and show you real quick. I already have um, six, well, I did have six, one, two, three, four, five. I guess I only have five of those swirls. So let me go ahead and um, come over here and we'll cut another one. So I've got three going that way, three going that way. I need another one like this. So the best way I can recommend that you begin the process is by cutting these six pieces right here. The six that are going to be your weave that goes in the middle between the colors. And so you're going to put, go ahead and cut an initial curve on the very edge of your paper and then look right down here at the base or at the top, whichever one you, whichever shoulder you've chosen to use uh, to cut your swirl. And using this lower, the, this point that is on the shoulder, whichever, like I said, whether it's this shoulder or this shoulder doesn't really matter, but whichever one it is, you're simply going to move your paper forward the amount of thickness that you want your your cut to be. And what I had um, the ladies this weekend do is just go ahead and move it forward one notch on the grid because it just seemed to work easier for them and it gave them um, more opportunity to have an evenly cut piece. Now you can see that this is bigger than this one right here so I do have some variants in mine I cut these a while back so it's possible that this one is just a little bit too narrow because it's it's a uh, thinner by a skosh so maybe I'll just since I've got my trimmer out here I'll just cut one more so that I can um, try to have them all closer to the same there we go. All right, so there are my six pieces of white. And um, you're going to be doing a similar similar thing when you cut your, um, your swirls or these pieces. They're, it's more like an oblique or something. Um, but honestly, I'm not really sure what you call that shape. Um, so we're going to do our best there. And I am working with what's left of the paper pack after, um, after having many, 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 several ladies go ahead and do this process with me over the weekend. So just bear with me here. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and put a curve on the very edge of this paper so I can show you how to create your swell. Okay, so I just put the curve on here. Now what I'm gonna do is take my paper, whether you, you are using a scrap or you're using uh, a full size piece of paper, it doesn't matter, the process is the same. You're going to remove it from your trimmer and turn it like the page of a book and reinsert it on the other side and then line it up on the shoulder whichever shoulder you were using I, I tend to use the one that's closest to me when I'm doing this particular process then you're going to take again the corner that's closest to you down here and move it forward one 
one grid mark, okay? You don't need to move it any farther than that. Just one grid mark is going to give you these nicely shaped oblique um, curves and it'll be narrow right here which is what you want because you're going to need to cover it using these. Just trust me on that. Okay, so go ahead and cut your curves from there. If you want to do the design that Chrislyn used where she's she just has a variety of um, colors, a variety of papers in her weave, then it then you probably need one strip um, of five, four or five, maybe even six different papers. You can use both sides if you like both sides, um, but you don't need um, a specific amount. If you want to do the one that I did where mine looks more like a barber pole where I have kind of things lined up like this, you're going to need at least two strips, two curvy, two of these, in order to do your, um, in order to have enough to do all, uh, I think it's five layers we've got here of um, swirls, okay? Just to give you a hint so that you know how many you should cut. Now, if you're going to try to do another one um, so that you have two, you'll want to turn that back, like again, like just like a page of a book, just flip it over again. And going from that side to this side, you're going to want to again line up, line it up on the shoulder that you were using before, and then put the, the taller swell on the one mark. The one, the line that lines up with the one mark at the top and the bottom of your trimmer, and that will give you the the sized, a comparable, a comparably sized piece um, to the one that you created already. All right. So here are my, those are my extras. We'll just kind of scoot them over there. And I'm going to trim up a few more of these. And, um, and then we will start assembling. So bear with me here for just a few minutes. So again, we're going one, just one notch up. Oops, helps when you keep that on the far edge, at least for me it does because I prefer to cut towards me using this trimmer. It just works better for me. Um, I don't know if that's been your experience or not, but that works better for me with this trimmer. So, um, everybody's different though, and everybody's uh, tool is different. I think it has to do with the sharpness of my blade. Um, so, When I try to push my blade forward, it seems to snag and doesn't doesn't really do very well. Okay, so those are the same. Here, we'll flip that over so we can get a more accurate representation of all the different colors we've got. And I'm gonna just, because I don't know what else I'll do with this little tiny piece, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and make one more so the instructions for this are only going to give you one page um, if you want more than one page of this then you need obviously you need more you need to cut more of these and more of these um, I feel like this is a design that would work really really well as um, as a title page for an album. Um, unless you enjoy doing single page layouts in your album, which is also 
you know, that there is a space for that. I am more of a two page scrapbooker. So if I have only a single page layout, um, then chances are good it's going to turn into a title page because I, I just don't do one, one page layouts much. I am a, a I have taught my children to take many, many photos when we go places and do things. And my mother is a photographer and my sister is a photographer. And so we always have many, many, many pictures available. Too many to do a single page spread of virtually anything. So, okay, this one has already been cut and I want to, I want to turn this into swells that I can use because I don't have any more yellow printed paper. So, oh, I need to center this. So this page was was uh, trimmed a little different, or this piece was trimmed just a little different. So just bear with me a second because this one's going to take some manipulating. Come on. One. I need it to be at one. Mm. Right. I've got a really nice ribbon piece and we'll use these which are not going to be wide enough. That one's wide enough. These are not. All right, well, I'll figure that out now when we get there. I may need to borrow some yellow from someplace else. Okay, so we probably have enough pieces over here, but I think I want a little more of a variety. So I'm going to um, just cut a couple more of these. Oh, hang on. We're going to do it this way. All right, and I already have a bunch um, up there that I can use too. So maybe we'll just go ahead and go with what we've got here. All right, so setting that trimmer aside, let me remove my extra pieces. This is the piece I decided to go ahead and use as my base piece. And I need, I need a piece that I can use as my um, side. So let me just go ahead and use a piece of this. So this is this, um, the piece you start with is two by 12. So that's what I'm cutting now. So this will be my piece that goes on the very left hand side of the layout. And I'm going to grab my adhesive and go ahead and adhere this down. Okay. So this just goes right along the edge. OK. 
Okay, then the next thing that you're going to do is take your, um, take these pieces right here and you're going to cut them apart. And the more evenly you can cut them apart, the more, uh, you're, the, the happier you're going to be with your um, alignment of everything. It's going to be so much easier for you in the long run if you can make these into even pieces. So I'm going to just sort of stack them together like so. And then you you want to cut them apart as much in the center of that swell as possible. So you can eyeball it or you can, you know, try and measure it, but honestly, I don't really know what measurement to give you. So just cut them apart as much in the center as possible. And by cutting them all at the same time, they'll all be, hopefully be a little more evenly spaced and match up a little bit better. Okay, so there's those. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with these pieces. My son must be watching a video upstairs. He's not seeing the light. I have a cool new light my husband made for me that lets my children know when I'm recording down here, which is neat but they have to look at the light in order to know, so. I think my son may not have noticed. <laughs> I can hear him up there giggling. Okay, so you're going to want to use your repositionable adhesive. This is going to be your best friend on this layout, okay? And, um, it is going to be helpful if you go ahead and lay things out the way you think you're going to want them um, ahead of time. So I'm going to go ahead and start by laying out the colors that I want next to each other. And, um, and that way I can switch them around as I need to. Okay, so we're going to put that one up there. I want maybe a yellow one, maybe this one in the middle right here. I'm gonna do another one of these. Whoops, that one needs to be on an end because it's cut off. So let me grab a different one. Here it is. I'm gonna put this color down here and like your quilt. It is kind of. So my daughter just said it's like I'm quilting and she's she's not wrong. Um, it is a little bit like that. For sure. So I think I'm going to want that one up there. I want the green again to kind of repeat over this direction. I've got a different green I can put in there. Um, this green is too much like my base paper, so I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use the darker side if I use those papers. Um, let's see. We can use another kind of pinky purple. So my other one was a little bit like a maypole. This one is um, going to be more of a variety of colors. Let's do that one because it's got some other colors in it.
and I'm laying this out again because I want I want to make sure I have my colors well distributed and kind of balanced. You want to have um, as much of that as you can so that um, you don't have the same color right next to it itself or right next to you know each other. Don't throw out these little tiny bits because you see I have little bits on the end right here I need to fill in with something. And so um, they are going to need something. When I get that far I can decide which colors or which papers to put where. I want this yellow again so maybe that one will go here. And we'd love to have this yellow repeated somewhere so I have a little more yellow, but I'm not sure where to put it. I think I need this green again, so maybe that will go here. I have to find that one. So let's see here. Oh, ta da! There it is. That one will go there. So then we have that one three times. I've got this one three times. I would love to have that yellow repeated three times somewhere. We need this one repeated again. So maybe we will scooch that out. Put it there and do like that. All right, so I think that actually works. And you see, I have a bunch of extra pieces, so I can do this again sometime, which will be fun. Um, but let's use the patterns that we've already got in here to add on. So I'm going to add this piece in here. I'm going to add this one in here, I think. We could add yellow in here, which would probably be okay. And what color, or which one to put up here? Maybe the pinky one, this one, can go up here. All right, so I'm fairly happy with that. So then, before you start adhering them down, and it's okay that I have a few that go off, we're gonna trim those when we're done. But um, you want to take your white, your first white piece and kind of align it like this. Make sure that the edges are, are where they need to be for your page. And then that's going to help you place these um, starters where you want them. Because this is going to kind of determine how you approach the rest of the layout. So you want to lay this down so that it is exactly in the center of that edge of your two inch piece of paper. Okay, so that the edge slices that ob ob obelisk right down the center and is in line with the curve of the, the white uh, piece. All right, so that's what you're going, that's your objective is to make sure that it's going to line up with the white piece. The rest of them are going to be so much easier, but this first row, it's critical that you have it lined up as accurately as you can. Don't worry if they don't quite meet in the middle. It is okay, it's going to be okay, trust me. All right, now, if you have a directional piece like this piece, 
it, it may not seem directional, but it actually is. So I'm going to turn it so that it matches the direction of these other pieces that are similar to it. Um, because that's going to bother me. If it's going to bother you, then make sure that you have it, have any directional pieces turned the appropriate way. This one is going to go just like that. All right, now I'm going to take my first white piece. I'm going to put an ample amount of repositionable adhesive all the way down it. Okay, and then I'm going to place it over the edge of these um, colored pieces all the way up so that it's covering the edge because I don't want to see that edge at all okay now I'm going to go ahead and um, do the same thing with my next piece and it's going to go over the edge but the difference in this one is I'm going to put adhesive on the on each end, so I put adhesive on that end, I'm adding adhesive on this end, then I'm going to add adhesive to the, the swells, the two swells um, that are going to be on the, on the top edge, like right here. And the reason is because I want to be able to slide the other pages, the other, these other pieces, underneath it. So again, I'm just placing this right along the edge. It's okay if it overlaps in the narrow space. Just go ahead and, and put it down, overlapping, so that your edges are covered. All right? Now we're going to go through and add these other pieces in and that one I'm going to do last so that I can lift up. Okay, so if you have an, um, if you have an all-purpose tool, it's going to be your friend with this layout. But right now you're just going to take each one of these and carefully slide them underneath with adhesive on them so that you can stick them down. And speaking of my all-purpose tool, where is it? There it is. Okay. So you might need to pop up, you know, the areas that you set down with your adhesive, but you shouldn't have to do do that too awfully much. but you might just a little. Okay, so I've got to get this one to pop up just a little so I can get this guy to slide under. Go under, go under. This is why um, they say this design is fiddly because you you really do have to fiddle with it and kind of just be persistent. Okay, try to try to make it match up as much as you can, but know that these edges are going to be covered, so it's not it's not as critical as you might think. Okay, now since I have adhered this edge down, I'm just going to pop 
pop up that white a little bit so that I can get this one in there. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here on this end so that I can slide this piece under. Okay, so then I'm going to take my next white piece and make sure that it's going the right direction that I want. Okay, so that I put my adhesive on the correct side. And I wasn't super careful about where I put my adhesive on this one, so that's going to probably plague me, but that's okay. I can always lift it up because it's just repositionable. And you want to go ahead and again cover those edges all the way up. my, my all-purpose tool. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this, but you're just going to keep, um, keep working this, and I just put permanent adhesive on this, but I think it'll be all right. You're going to keep um, working this until you get all of your lanes done. And um, and then I will come back. So you can watch it fast forward in here in just a sec. Okay, so I'm just getting ready to put this last uh, white piece down and um, I'm going to place this as, as right on top of the arch, uh, the colored arches as I possibly can because I don't want any of it to show beyond the white border. I want it all to be nice and neatly covered up, which for the most part it is. I've got a little bit of a shadow right there, but I think it'll be all right. Then we're going to go ahead and take our precision point scissors and just trim up the edges. If it's easier, you can flip it over and trim them this way. All right, and then the last thing we have to do other than embellishing is go ahead and um, cut some mats that are going to go on this page. So we're going to use um, this similar papers that match these colors. So I've got this piece I can use both sides of if I want to. I've got this piece I can use. I've got this piece I could use if I would like to. Um, and I could, I could actually cut into some other full-size pieces of paper if I needed to, but I don't really feel like I need to do that. So, um, because this is going to be more than adequate to make these three mats. You're going to make um, 
you're going to you can make the mats according to however um, whatever photos you are needing to put on here you can make those mats custom sized but it is designed so that you can put a four and a half by six and a half so let me just double check my measurements here okay so I'm just going to cut since this is the biggest piece I have, I'm going to use this to make my four and a half by six and a half mat. Oh, goodness. I hate it when my fingers slip like that. Okay, so six and a half, and then I'm turning it and going to cut it at four and a half. So here is our large mat that's going to go at the top. Then we're going to have a mat that is four and a half by four and a half square, which is going to be this purple, so that it kind of matches the purple on the top. And then I think, just because I think this dark green is a little bit I don't know actually, I probably could use it in there. We could use the dark green or we could use this one. I think this one kind of matches a little bit better and in line with the rest. So I think I'm going to go ahead and use this rather than the dark, uh, dark green. So this one would be four and a half and I think I've already got my well, that's four. So we're going to do four by four and a half. So I'm going to cut my four and a half going this way. So essentially you've got room for a four by six photo up here on top, a four by four photo here at the bottom, and a three and a half by four photo in the center. I'm going to turn that so that the darker is on the bottom. And just until I know what photos are going to go on here, I'm just going to attach this using repositionable adhesive. And that way I can move them, move it around if I want to. Okay, so I'm just going to place that roughly um, almost a half an inch from the edge there and same thing down here although I'm going to go an inch in from this edge but still a half inch up from the bottom maybe a little farther there we go and then this one this one's going to be nestled underneath and over top of so it's going to be just over what will be the the border around this photo and it'll be slightly underneath this photo down here. All right, now you can adjust those mats and move them around however makes you happy for, um, for the needs that you have for your photos. Or if you are doing a title page with this, then you certainly don't need the mats at all. But just to go ahead and give you, um, or let you see my other sample, really quickly. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it like this for a two page spread. I would, um, I would create a matching design. Like if you're doing stripes, like I did over here, I would do stripes on this side. Um, also, or if you're doing, you know, the miscellaneous colors, like I did over here, I would do that on this side also, and then use the same papers for the outer edges. And then that's, um, that's how I would do it. If I, if it was a two page spread, but then if you're using it as a title page, you could use it across the bottom, you could use it across the top, you could use it along the side and put your title over here um, as your cover, your cover page for your album. You know, there's just lots of variations, things that you could do. So, um, and don't forget to add some embellishments. Right now, um, if you were to go on my website and try to purchase this collection, the embellishments are sold out at the moment,
but they have reordered them and they will be coming back and available. They expect them to possibly be available even as early as May. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that's the case because these are really, really gorgeous and you can see how vibrant they are. Look at that ladybug. They're just, it's just so, they're so pretty. I've used the, I used this um, to show you the project recipe that was designed for this collection and um, the embellishments really just are very, very pretty. So um, hopefully you can get some of those if you don't already have some and use them to, um, to add just that little extra tidbit to these special pages. All right. So I hope that this has been helpful. I hope it's not too tedious of a layout and that you'll actually give it a try. Um, if you don't have the Creative Memories Decorative, tr decorative Trimmer, um, it is a wonderful tool and you can do some really fun things with it. So I do encourage you to, um, to get it. You can um, make everything from waves to ribbons. Here's an example of a, of a ribbon you can cut using this trimmer. Um, so just lots of t tips and tricks um, with this trimmer that make make having it in your arsenal of tools a really worthwhile thing. So I hope that you'll give it a try. And until next time, I hope you'll have many more creative moments. Thanks so much for joining me. You have a great day now.